What's up everyone, it's Matthew here at Midland Pictures and today we're going to talk more about data management. One of our most successful videos on the channel is our data management video where I talk about the hard drives we use, some of the software we use, and just some of the thinking behind how to manage your data, especially a high volume of data. So this video is really for anyone who's creating a lot of design or creative based media, photos, graphics, especially video. This media, especially photos and video, can be incredibly data consuming and we need to have the proper tools in order to manage that data. Those tools can be hard drives, the software that we use to manage that data, and just some of the systems and methods we use in order to make sure that that data is secure. So we're going to talk about a few key things. We're gonna talk about your options for storage, and then the software that you can use to manage your backups of that data. Before we get into that, I wanna talk a little bit about the responsibility you have to continue to level up your data game. Maybe we came up through wedding photography and wedding videography. Maybe we started doing projects with our DSLR for friends and family, and slowly it turned into something that we were making money on and then we decided to maybe form a company. You need to make sure that your data tools are matching that leveling up. Your clients are trusting you to handle the assets that you're creating to complete the projects you are being hired for. So it's this responsibility that you have to take very seriously. But I can't emphasize enough, as you take on more paid client work, they are trusting you to store and manage the data and media that you create for those projects. So it's your responsibility to either obtain the knowledge for how to manage that data yourself or get connected with someone who can do that for you, whether it's an employee, a freelancer, a coach, somebody that can help you understand the importance of managing your data. And what I see a lot of is nobody is factoring in the cost for all of those data management tools in the cost of their video or photos. So let's start by breaking down some of the different options you have for storing your media as you're working on projects. One path that you might take might be consumer hard drive, something like this. So this is a four terabyte hard drive and this is a five terabyte hard drive. These hard drives are something that you can use to store a lot of data. They're relatively inexpensive and they are adequate for things like graphic design, uh, some photography, uh, maybe some video depending on the resolution you're filming at, but they're large size hard drives that you can get relatively inexpensively and store a lot of data. Another option for storage is something called a RAID. A RAID is an enclosure that contains numerous spinning disk hard drives or possibly solid state drives in a different RAID configuration. There's several different RAID configurations out there. I personally use RAID 5, which gives me the ability for one drive in my RAID array to fail without losing data. What's nice about a RAID array is that you can increase your data transfer speeds, your read-write speeds significantly. And this allows for you to work with much more complex media like 4K footage, possibly 4K raw footage, depending on the RAID array that you have and the connectivity that you have. The enclosures allow for very fast speeds, data transfer speeds, usually over Thunderbolt 1, Thunderbolt 2, or the current Thunderbolt 3, or USB-C. The final option is something called shared storage or network attached storage, and there's a couple of different products that work for this. There's products from QNAP, there's products from Synology, and there's a wonderful product from LumaForge called the Jellyfish. These drives are like a RAID, but they attach over a network. The current technology for the connectivity is what's called 10 gigabit ethernet. And this connectivity allows for you to have 10 gigabits per second over an ethernet connection, usually by CAT7, so that multiple people can be working in a single environment off of one shared drive. So something that ends up happening as people use consumer drives like this is their workstations become a mess of multiple drives because as they level up into higher megapixel photos and taking hundreds and hundreds of photos per session or they start moving from 1080 footage up to 4K footage, maybe they got the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera 4K or 6K and they're shooting in RAW, that consumes a ton of data and these drives are not sufficient not only to play back that kind of media, but they're not sufficient to store it in mass quantities. So you might see a stack of these on your desk and be struggling to try to sort through what's what, what project is where, 
and things just become a mess and you're overwhelmed. It's also very difficult to manage the backups of all those drives because if you're really doing things correctly, if you have multiple consumer drives in your workflow, you need to be backing up each of those to another drive. And I would even argue a third location, whether it's Backblaze, Backblaze or something in the cloud, or a third drive that's stored in an off-site location. That's why, as you, again, continue to create massive amounts of media, you need to be thinking about leveling up to something like a RAID because you're not only going to see speed boosts, you're going to see a significant boost in your data security. You'll see that I have a Promise Pegasus 2 R8 with 24 terabytes of data, which gets knocked down to 21 terabytes of data with a RAID 5 configuration. And then I have a second enclosure, which is a Pegasus R4. This is the original Pegasus R4, so Thunderbolt 1. And it has 12 terabytes of storage. Now that's RAID 0, which means if one drive fails, I lose all the data which isn't a huge deal because I have the data stored online with the Pegasus R8. But every single night at 1.30 in the morning, the Pegasus R8 backs up to the Pegasus R4 using the application called Chronosync. Chronosync is incredibly easy to use. You simply open the application, create a new synchronizer document, select the destination drives that you want to be using. So for me, if I want to back up my R8, I'm going to select that and put it in the left window, and then I'm going to select my R4 and put it in the right window. I like to make sure that I'm using the mirror option because I want the Pegasus R8 to be mirrored on the R4. And that means that if I delete something off the R8, but that file is still on the R4, when it synchronizes, I want it to delete that file off the R4 so that I'm freeing up space as I go and that I have a perfect mirror of the R8 to the R4. So I synchronize deletions and immediately send them to the trash. And then under the options menu, I select to turn smart scan off. And then for packages, I choose to dissect. The reason I do that is because a Final Cut library is considered a package. And Chronosync needs to be able to look inside of it to see what information is in there to be able to sync it to another drive. It literally is that simple. I think this application is $40. And with $40, and a simple application, you can be scheduling Chronosync to do mirrored backups of your main online storage to a backup drive every single day. I cannot emphasize how important this is if you're doing paid work as a media professional. Now you might be thinking, but it's so expensive to get a RAID. They're actually not that bad as far as price goes. Both of mine I picked up used on eBay. The Pegasus R4 years ago I picked up with I believe four terabytes of storage for $500. Even now that's a pretty good deal for something that can hold 12 terabytes and more of data. My Pegasus R8 was a bit more expensive. It was about $1,800 with all the hard drives in it, so 24 terabytes. No doubt about it, that is an investment, especially for someone who is still working on their own, wedding films, corporate things, etc. But I cannot tell you enough how important it is to have a device like this, not only for the speed of playback of your videos, photos, and the other content you create, but for the security and ease of use of a Pegasus. Right now, as we can take a look at eBay, and let's see what some of the prices are for a used R8. And this is a Pegasus that is Pegasus 2. Let's go with the Pegasus 2 R8. And for most people shooting in 4K, 1080 uh, video, this is plenty of speed if you're connecting it by Thunderbolt 2 to your Mac. Again, it's 20 gigabits per second. So right now I'm looking at a Promise Pegasus 2 R8 with 24 terabytes of storage for $750. Again, I know that that kind of at first thought might be a lot of money, but for the value that you get out of it, that is an incredible deal. Here's an 18 terabyte Pegasus 2 R6 for $900. Here's a Pegasus R4, this is the, this is the Thunderbolt 1 version, with three terabytes of storage and it's $230, which is great. A Pegasus R6 with 10 terabytes of storage for $288. Some of the, the prices for these used items are 
are incredibly affordable. And again, there are lots of tutorials, there are easy instructions to follow for how to set up a RAID in RAID 0, RAID 10, RAID 5 to be able to match what your needs are for your data. I'm a personal fan of Promises hardware. I've been using it for close to 10 years now and I have never had an issue. Their customer service is pretty good for the few times that I've needed to use it and the devices just work. Now that doesn't mean that I haven't had a hard drive failure, that's just inevitable, it's going to happen no matter what, but replacing a hard drive and getting everything back up and running is incredibly easy. Now I know I have advanced knowledge of how to do this stuff and set up a RAID, but I didn't the first time that I did it, and I simply went through the manual, watched a few YouTube videos, and knew exactly what to do. The other thing is, is you're going to make an investment in a RAID array, let's say, and let's say it's a 24 terabyte machine. Now, the school of thought is that you should have something of equal size in order to be able to back it up. I've been using a 12 terabyte backup for several years now and have only just recently started to get close to the capacity of that backup drive. And that's because with our C300 Mark II, which I'm filming on right now, we have adopted a 4K workflow and our data needs have increased. Now on the R8, I have plenty of room on that drive, even with a massive edit project like a feature documentary I just edited, but I was kind of dealing with size, size issues on the backup. So I have a couple of options. I can upgrade the Pegasus R4 to four, five, six terabyte drives, or I can look at getting another enclosure like an R6 or another R8. That R8 for 750 bucks is certainly tempting in order to have my data backed up in two places. Now let's say you have an R4 with 12 terabytes on it. You could get something like this, a 10 terabyte external, and have that connected 24 seven so that Chronosync can be doing backups of your really good fast R4 type drive to something like this that you really don't need to be incredibly fast because you're just doing daily backups. One last tip I'm gonna give you if you decide to go with something like a RAID or shared storage. It is critically important that you have at least one backup drive in case one of the drives in your enclosure fails. If you're going to rely on ordering one through Amazon or running over to Best Buy and grabbing one, you are going to be waiting a long time to get your data back up and running. And if your main online storage loses a drive and that data is not accessible, you are looking at delays in getting your work done. Now let's say you're at the heat of a deadline and one of your drives fails and you don't have a backup like I do. This is for the R4 and this is for the R8. So if one of the drives in that enclosure fails, I can pop it out, put this one in, and rebuild the data. Now I actually had this happen to me just recently. I was starting a feature documentary edit. I had built the entire project in Final Cut, and one of the drives on my backup drive failed. Now fortunately, I didn't really lose any time on the project because when that drive failed, I was able to pull it out, put in the new one, and at night when I was done with my work, transfer all the data back to that backup drive. I think it was something like 10 plus terabytes, and because it's Thunderbolt 2 going to a RAID 0 Thunderbolt 1 drive, I was able to transfer 10-ish terabytes of data overnight. Something like that on these types of drives would take significantly longer because it's just USB 3.0, which is five gigabits per second, and these typically have 5400 or slower spinning disk drives. They're incredibly slow, they're not fast for data, and they can be a real liability when you get into a lurch with your data, a drive failure, or your project all of a sudden balloons up to something more significant than you thought, or the media that you're using is really resource intensive and this drive just can't keep up. So always make sure that you have a spare drive ready to go in case you have a drive failure when you're on a project. So I know that's a lot of information to absorb and I really wanna make sure that I'm not sounding sort of fire and brimstone here with everything that I'm talking about with your data, but I've seen it over and over again where people who are creating professional media for clients who are paying them sometimes a lot of money to do this work are not leveling up their data game to match the work that they're doing. It's a real liability for your business and your reputation and your brand, and you need to protect yourself against that. If you're someone who has a bunch of external drives sitting on your desk and you're shuttling back and forth between them trying to remember where your Lightroom catalog is or where that project is from this one client, you should really strongly consider consolidating all those drives into one large RAID array. 
getting another drive to back all that data up, and then properly archiving projects onto a spinning disk drive, and then backing that up uh, so that you have your archive content in two places. It is a big investment. It can be very expensive, but I'm telling you, having your stuff together with regards to your data is crucially important to the viability of your business. If you have any questions about this, please drop a comment below. I always love to hear feedback about the systems and methodology that I use for my data management. There are certainly other options out there that might be more expensive and better suited for some of you. For me, this is the best option under my current configuration, which is mostly working on my own on projects and occasionally having freelance editors come in and they work off of their own equipment. So if there are other products out there, other software out there, other ways that you think I could up my data game, I would love to hear from you. I would love to see what ideas you have or what experience you have with managing your own data. Thanks again, everyone, for watching. I know data management can be a little bit boring, especially when I'm yelling at you to get everything under control. But I appreciate you watching, and until the next video, good luck with managing your data.